Binghamton's classic rock station, 99 won the whale with Jefferson Starship and Jane. And we are pleased to be joined with the voice behind that song and many others like We Built This City, Sarah, No Way Out. Nothing's going to stop us now. Mickey Thomas is with us. Hey, Mickey. Hello. How you doing? It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. You know, you, you kind of destroyed the persona of rock stars. You're in here at 7 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. amazing. Well, yeah, and I'm and I'm actually on West Coast time, so it's about 4 o'clock in the morning. It feels you, like. And I know you got in early, so first I want to thank you for coming in this morning. Sure, you're welcome. And we want to talk about Starship. I know you're performing at the Magic City Music Hall tonight at 8 p.m., but I uh, just had a couple questions. I was just yeah. curious because a lot of people don't know that among all these other hits that you sang lead on Elvin Bishop's big hit, Fooled Around and Fell in Love. Yes, I did when I was just a young pup, yeah. So how did that happen? How did you get into that band? Well, uh, I was in San Francisco. I was singing with uh, this gospel singer named Gideon Daniels, who was actually my mentor. He mm-hmm. really taught me how to sing. And, and he introduced me to Elvin Bishop. He and Elvin were friends. And then... So I segued from uh, singing with Gideon into getting into the Elvin Bishop band. And uh, as I kind of started out in, the, in Elvin's band as more or less a background vocalist, you know, and doing some harmony vocals and some duets with Elvin. And then, and then the first album we were recording, Strutting My Stuff. And um, we were almost done with the album and the producer said, I think we need maybe one more song to kind of round out the album, you know, that we're missing one piece of the puzzle. Right. So I suggested fooled around Mm -hmm. because Elvin had played it for me just on his acoustic in his living room and I thought you know it stuck in my head there was something I thought there was something very special about the song so and Elvin wasn't even intending on recording it so he said yeah well all right we'll give it a shot so so we cut the track and the producer said well do you want to have a shot at singing it and I said of course and um you know it, it was one of those deals you know back then a lot of people say it was a you know it was a one take vocal, but I must be honest and say it was two. There was one take, uh, there was one vocal take up to the solo, and then one take after the solo. But yes, I did, and I was young, and the song opened a lot of doors for me. It was a monster gold hit. I mean, it's still played yeah. all over radio today. Well, y- yeah, still gets played a lot, and it, and it's appeared in many movies. You know, uh, yeah. most recently, Guardians of the Galaxy. So, so how did you go from being in that band to uh, Jefferson Starship, which was actually was a legendary Jefferson Airplane, and they transitioned? Yes, it was pretty much uh, a phone call. You know, I had uh, I had just left the Elvin Bishop band, and I was uh, making plans to go to uh, Miami and start recording a solo album and and at that point in time too uh you know grace slick and marty ballon had both left uh jefferson uh, starship and uh, the drummer had been involved in a big car crash and he was going to be out for a while so there was a lot of question as to whether or not the band would uh, could continue on but the rest of the guys decided they wanted to go on they they gave me a call one of the roadies i think brought in a tape of the stuff i'd done with the elvin bishop band and played it for them and I happened to be living in the Bay Area where the band was based, so they said, oh, well, he's right here in our own backyard. And they gave me a call, and at first I was sort of taken aback, like, how is this going to work out? Because with my musical background and then the perception I had of Jefferson Starship, I wasn't sure how that was going to mesh, you know? Right. But uh, I thought I'd give it a shot, and went down and hung out and met the guys, and, you know, kind of got to know them, and we did some jamming, and actually Jane was the first song that we ever uh, rehearsed with the band and the first song that we ever recorded. Did you have any idea that uh, that band, Jefferson Starship, which later became Starship, would be as big as it was? Well, you know, um, Jefferson Starship was already pretty big, um, uh, but it did, you know, they were kind of known for, in the 70s, as more of the kind of mid-tempo ballads, you know, Miracles and Runaway and Count on Me. Uh, so when we came out, you know, we definitely reinvented the, the band, and when we came out with Jane, it was a real musical change, and it was uh, kind of the calling card for the new Jefferson Starship. But fortunately, uh, it went over well, and Jane, you know, kind of uh, uh, set, set the tone for the new Jefferson Starship. But, but you know, you never know. And then um, I did a couple of albums, and then Grace came back into the band, right. and, and that helped. And, uh, and then we uh, reinvented ourselves again in 1985 and came out with the Knee Deep in the Hoopla. Which was a huge album, the huge hits that you guys had in the 80s. And working with Grace Slick and Paul Kander, how was that? It was great. It was very different uh, as far as those two personalities, you know. Grace was uh, really easy to work with. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to shatter a lot of people's illusions out there, right. you know, with the image you have of Grace Slick. But, but she was very sweet and very easy to work with and um, very intelligent. Paul, on the other hand, <laughs> could be kind of can, cantankerous, you know. He was, Paul's the kind of guy that if everything's just smooth sailing, you're going along and everybody's, you know, laughing and smiling, right. hey, 
he would create some kind of controversy, you know, to create some kind of conflict in the band. He thrived on that. And then shortly after that, you guys dropped the Jefferson part of it. Was that something to do with, with Paul leaving or? Yeah, well, it was kind of it was kind of twofold. You know, we um, we had reached a point in the band where we wanted to um, disassociate ourselves to some extent with the with the Jefferson part of the name, which went all the way back to the '60s and the Jefferson Airplane. As we were making Knee Deep in the Hoopla, we knew that we were again totally reinventing the band, a new sound and a new way of making the music. And um, and then Paul had just left the band too, and there was a lawsuit involved, and we were we wanted to shorten the name anyway, so we right. can maybe kind of work this into the settlement with Paul and say you can have the Jefferson and we'll take the Starship. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you have been continuously writing and touring throughout the years. I know you have some new stuff. Tell us about what you're doing now. Yeah, well, touring right now more than anything. Um, we did we put out a new um, Starship album a couple of years ago called Loveless Fascination which was a, a really good record. I'm really proud of it. We, we kind of, with that record, the intent going in was uh, I wanted it to sound more like a 70s record than an 80s record or a 90s record, and I think we achieved that very organic, live-sounding record. I got this uh, CD that you gave me here. In fact, I'm going to play a cut from it because it's funny. I do a feature called Friday Morning Live on Fridays where I play live cuts. Yeah. So we'll be doing a live cut from this album as well. This live at Stanley Cup with Starship yeah. featuring Mickey Thomas. Where can people get your music, Mickey? Well, you know, you can get it at iTunes, mm -hmm. Amazon, CD Baby. <laughs> Pretty much anywhere that you yeah. can get your music. Yeah. So what can what can fans expect from your show tonight? You're going to do some of the older stuff, some of the newer stuff? Yeah, you know, I try to do... Um, Everything that I've had a hand in helping to create over the years with Jefferson Starship and Starship. So, of course, Jane, find your way back. No way out. Laying it on the line. We built this city, Sarah. Nothing's going to stop us. It's not over. Uh, fooled around and fell in love. I, I, I still sing that song every night in the live show. And then my female vocalist and I, Stephanie Calvert, who's an amazing singer, by the way. Very great on stage. Uh, we go back and do uh, sort of a tribute to the kind of the entire history of the band. Um, and so that means that Stephanie, of course, does a couple of the iconic Grace Slick songs like White Rabbit and Somebody You Love. And so we leave no stone unturned. I'm sure the fans will appreciate that, yeah. Becky. And yeah, I mean, we're looking forward to the show. It's 8 o'clock tonight, Magic City Music Hall up at Front Street, Binghamton. People can get tickets at Ticketmaster.com or they can get them at the box office as well. Um, again, we, we enjoy having you here. It's not often that we get people to come in of your stature, and we really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward to tonight. We're looking forward to it, too. We're going to kick off a Starship song for you right now. Here's We Built This City. Thank you, Mickey Thomas.